What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I am super excited because we are doing a full face of dupes video, but today's is going to have a little twist to it. If you guys have watched my full face of dupes video in the past, basically I do one half of my face with high-end makeup and the other half of my face with a drugstore dupe alternative. And in the end, we basically want our face to look like we use the same products on both sides and we see the differences in the products as well as obviously the price difference. But for today, we're going to do half of our face with viral high-end products and the other half with all of the corresponding elf dupes. We all know elf has been out here just allegedly duping some of the most viral high-end products and doing it very well in a lot of cases, all right? I gotta say in some of these cases, I like the elf product better than like the high-end equivalent to it. Some of these I have not tested right next to each other on the skin, so I'm very interested to see. I got this idea from Manny MUA, so I saw him do this video a couple months ago and I loved watching it. I thought it was a great watch, so I will link it down below if you guys didn't see his video, but elf has come out with some more dupes since then. So I was like, you know what? I wanna do it and put my own little spin on it, but shout out to Manny because that is 100% where I got this idea from. And he does it with other brands too, which is really cool. So like I said, I will link his video down below. You can check out his channel. I'm sure the vast majority of you already know Manny, but I thought it was a great idea. You guys know that I love Elf. This is not in any way sponsored by Elf. Um, I know a lot of times when people do like one branded videos, people tend to think that they are sponsored, but this is not sponsored. I just want to see. Let's put them on the skin right next to each other and see which ones are better and we'll do the full price difference and everything else at the end. So Without further ado, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and click the little bell right next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of all my future uploads, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm going to do high-end on this side, e.l.f. on this side. My biggest fear always is that I'm gonna like mix it up halfway through. High-end, e.l.f. We got it, okay. For our first little doopy dupe, we have like a more skincare product. So this is the Super Gloop, Super Goop Glow Screen. I have loved this. This is one of my favorite sunscreens. It's really beautiful, but e.l.f. very recently came out with a dupe for it. This is the Sun Touchable Woe Glow. So they're very similar. They're both sunscreens that can be used as a primer for your makeup, but they have a really pretty glow to them. One thing that I do want to say right off the bat, Super Goop 40 SPF, e.l.f. 30. There is a difference in the SPF if you're fair skinned like me. I'm like a 100 SPF type of girly, especially if I know I'm really going to be out in the sun, but if I'm wearing it underneath my makeup, I'm not going to be like going to the beach. 30 to 40 SPF is typically fine for me, but did want to note the SPF difference. Um, I just have a little mini version of the Super Goop Glow Screen at the moment, but the full size retails for $38. So I'm going to go in on this side and show you. These do have differences because I've tried both obviously, and I'll show you where the differences are. So you can see that this one is tinted. So it's going to add a slight tint to your skin and very much a glow. This one has a darker tint to it than the e.l.f. one does. So when I go in with the e.l.f. one, you will see that this one definitely gives a bit darker of a tint, which I do like because typically my face is a lot lighter than my body. So something with a little extra tint is great, but that is the Super Goop. The e.l.f. Woe Glow is $14. And as you guys can see, it is a much lighter product. Still does have a slight tint to it, but this one's more glowy, less of an actual tint on the skin. So you do have to work in it a little bit more to make sure that you don't get a white cast. But once it's worked into the skin, at least on my skin tone, it does not give me a white cast. But you can see it when applied to the skin, the difference in color. This one definitely has a darker tint to it than the e.l.f. one does. There are a lot of dupes based on complexion. So I am just gonna put them all on my skin today so we can test all of them. Some are a little bit more obvious of dupes than others. Um, this one I would say is relatively obvious. We have the Milk Hydro Grip Primer and the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, both green looking quite similar, both sticky primers that are supposed to make the makeup adhere to the skin. The Milk one retails for $38 and I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I am doing the most for you guys because this product makes me break out, um, which is why I don't use it. It's not a bad product, it's actually a very popular primer but there's something in it that does not agree with my skin, but I'm going to apply it on anyways, and it is eating through that sunscreen like crazy. Wow, that's kind of nuts, but we're gonna just like blend it, but it's definitely kind of ate through that sunscreen, so probably should let it sit on the skin for a little bit longer, but we're rolling with it. I'm not even gonna be going outside today, to be honest with you, so I think we'll be okay, but I can't say it's a bad primer, but if you have acne prone skin like me, I would not suggest it because it gave me very bad breakouts. It took me a while to figure out that it was this product, and then once I realized that I didn't use it again, unless I'm doing videos like this where I'm being the guinea pig and showing you guys. The elf one, however, does not make me break out, which is great, and this one is also significantly cheaper. It's $10. So again, this is the Power Grip. They recently came out with a newer one that is in pink packaging and has niacinamide in it, but this is like the OG original. This one is actually a bit stickier in consistency and also eating through the sunscreen, interestingly enough. So neither layers quite well with sunscreen, but this one I would say has a bit more of a sticky tacky consistency to it. Like if you can see my finger kind of sticking to my face, then the milk one does, but will definitely help your makeup adhere 
to your skin. Okay, up next we have another primer. This one not as blatant of a dupe, but honestly they work very, very similarly. We have the Tatcha the Silk Canvas. This retails for $54. Um, I never really thought that this was worth the $54 price point. It's not a bad primer. This is what it looks like. Honestly, at this point, mine is probably expired, but we're gonna use a little bit of it anyways, but I really don't reach for it that much. For 54 bucks, I should have reached for it a lot more. Um, and then the e.l.f. Poreless Putty, this is $10. Looks super similar packaging. I have a nice fresh one here, but the product itself looks very similar and they work very similarly. They are basically just pore filling primers that you can put in any area that you have enlarged pores to kind of smooth over the area so they actually work well with like the gripping primers because the gripping primers are not going to give you any smoothness to your skin so this is a good case of like when you should double prime so i'm going in with the tatcha just right where i have enlarged pores and then going to go in with the elf on the other side in the exact same area to fill in and blur to be honest i think these work very very similarly and obviously the price difference is quite hefty. There's also a lot of versions of this e.l.f. Poreless Primer. I'm using the OG original one, but they have a matte version, a luminous one, an acne fighting one, a vitamin C one. Like there's a ton of options where with the Tatcha, I'm pretty sure it's just that one. So this one, if anything, there's a lot more options for different skin types, which is great. All right, we have finally made it into a complexion and one of my favorite dupes. So first we have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. So I'm gonna go in on this side with this product. This is beautiful, very, very glowy, was a super, super popular product and one that I really enjoyed and still do enjoy, but definitely enjoyed it more before Elf came out with the dupe version because I actually like the dupe version better. But this retails for $49 at Sephora. It does give a beautiful glow to the skin, a bit of a tint. This one is not gonna give you a lot of coverage. I would say very light coverage. So for me, when I used to use this, it was more so a product that I either used beneath my foundation or I would mix it in with my foundation to give it more of a glow because it doesn't give a ton of coverage on its own. When e.l.f. came out with a more like dupe version, which is the e.l.f. Halo Glow, you guys know, this is incredible. This is $14 where this one, I think I already said retails for 49. So significantly cheaper. This one actually gives a lot more coverage, which is one of the main reasons why I like it more, um, honestly, than the higher end version is because this gives more coverage so I can wear it as a complexion product on its own. Or you of course have the option of wearing it beneath the foundation or mixing it in with the foundation, but definitely gives a higher coverage on its own than Charlotte does, which I like. And I do think it's a bit more glowy too. The shades are different. Um, the e.l.f. ones definitely run darker. So that is something that I will say because in the Charlotte Tilbury, I'm shade 4.5 and the e.l.f. I'm shade three. Um, they definitely run darker in the e.l.f. Halo Glow. So I'm hoping that they come out with more shades in it. That would be amazing. I think. I would hope that's probably something that they might be working on. I really, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying <laughs> that would be awesome. But shade three does work pretty well for me and definitely gives a better coverage to my skin than Charlotte Tilbury does on its own, which is why I prefer it. Up next, we have another like definitely blatant, I would say, dupe. Um, this is the It Cosmetics CC Plus Cream. This has been viral forever and e.l.f. gave us the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. So super, super similar. I mean, packaging, everything very, very similar. I'm gonna go in with the It Cosmetics on this side. I have shade medium. Gonna go in on this side and press it into the skin. Very, very hydrating, skincare infused, high SPF on this. This I believe is 50 SPF, which is amazing. This used to always be my go-to like for pool days and stuff because it's perfect, especially mixed with a sunscreen underneath this on top. You are covered. Um, I do really like this product. Have always really liked this product, but it does retail for $47. The e.l.f. Camo CC retails for 15, so it is a lot cheaper. I will say with this one, I do like the It Cosmetics better. The e.l.f. one is much cheaper, so it is not a bad option, and I do think they're quite similar. I do think the e.l.f. one is much more matte. So if you're looking for something that's more matte, you will probably honestly like the e.l.f. one better. For me, I love glowy, so I think that's also part of the reason why I like the It Cosmetics one a bit better, because it's definitely more hydrating feeling to the skin. The e.l.f. one, I think, is a higher coverage. It's more full coverage than the It Cosmetics one is. I used one pump on each, and this definitely is giving me more coverage but it also definitely is much more of a matte finish. So depending on your personal preference, which one you would like better would be different. I think if you want something more full coverage and something that's more mattifying, you will actually probably like the e.l.f. better. The shades are also slightly different. I used medium in the it cosmetics and then in the e.l.f. I used light 280 neutral. So neither is a bad product, but just wanna explain the differences when it comes to that. All right, up next for a concealer, we have like my OG favorite of all time, Tarte Shape Tape and the e.l.f. Camo concealer. Now, super similar, both very full coverage, both matte finish, gonna cover up your problem areas, whatever you're trying to cover up, essentially. Tarte Shape Tape retails for $31. I'm going in with shade light neutral, gonna put that 
on my under eyes. As I said before, this will cover up anything and more that you need it to cover up. And while I like the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream, I do like Shape Tape better. I do think that it is a bit more coverage. I think it lasts and sits a little bit better on my under eyes, but that does not mean that the e.l.f. Camo is a bad product. This is just one of my favorite full coverage concealers of all time. I will always love it. I always go back to it. I know people complain that this is drying to the under eyes. On me, honestly, it's fine. Elf Camel people I know complain too that it's drying. They do both have alternative hydrating versions. Tarte has the ultra creamy. Elf has the hydrating camo, um, which are basically more hydrating versions of these two. I prefer the matte original versions of both better because they definitely both give a better coverage. The Camo CC Cream retails for seven bucks. So it's a fraction of the price and 100% not a bad option at all. But like I said, with a lot of these dupes, I actually prefer the e.l.f. version. So if there's a situation where I don't prefer the e.l.f. version, I'm gonna tell you and explain why. But again, you really can't go wrong with this product at the $7 price point. It's gonna be full coverage, give a great finish, last well. I just find at the end of the day, if I'm really looking at like my under eyes or specifically like if I'm covering up like a blemish, which is what I really love the full coverage matte foundations for, I do think that Shape Tape does last a bit better throughout the day. But of course it comes at a higher price point, so neither are bad options. So far, I feel like we are looking quite similar on both sides of our face. All right, now we're gonna move into a contour. So on the high-end side, we have the Charlotte Tilbury contour one, and then we have the brand new e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty one. So this one's gonna retail for $42, this one nine. Both good products that definitely come with a significant difference in price. I'm gonna do two dots of the Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade medium deep. There's five shades in the e.l.f. one. There's only two in Charlotte Tilbury. So I tried to pick the ones that corresponded the best with one another so we could really see how they look similarly on the skin. The Charlotte Tilbury one, I mean, it blends like a dream. You cannot take that away from it. It literally blends so well into the skin very quickly, looks natural, lasts well throughout the day, um, which I absolutely really like. But again, it has the high price point and the lack of shade range to me is one of the biggest downsides. Contour shades is really just not enough. Where e.l.f. gave us five, the one that I find to be most similar to the medium deep in Charlotte Tilbury is the medium tan in the e.l.f. So that is what I'm going to use. Again, I'm gonna do the two dots and go in and blend. This one also blends very, very nicely. Like it literally already blended into my skin. Lasts well throughout the day and looks natural. You will see once this one is blended out, it actually looks a lot lighter on the skin than the Charlotte Tilbury one does. Again, because of the difference in the shade. There are two more shades darker than this in the e.l.f. where in Charlotte Tilbury, this is the darkest option that they have. Um, it does definitely look darker on the skin. Also, the doe foot applicator is larger on this one. As you can see, so you do get more product when you just do two dots. So I probably should have done more. I'll add a little bit more of the e.l.f. And and blend it a little bit better, but both I will say are messy. Like the applicators, they gotta figure out a way to make these applicators like not so messy. The e.l.f. ones so far are not as messy as the Charlotte Tilbury, but they still, you know, get a little messy in the cap there. My Charlotte Tilbury ones are always exploding. Even when I like close them, they still are. I don't know. Somebody's gotta figure out a better contraption than this for these products. But overall, in this category, I would say the e.l.f. wins again because of the larger shade range and the price is very significant. I'm gonna blend this one out a little bit more. I'm not sure if it translates on camera as well, but the Charlotte Tilbury is actually a lot more warm toned than the e.l.f. one is. The e.l.f. one is more cool toned, which for a actual contour would be what you would ultimately want. So do want to put that out there as well. Now, they also came out with the blushes. So we have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty wand and we have the Glowgasm Beauty Light wand from Charlotte Tilbury. Now, this is my favorite blush of all time. I love this. This is in the shade Pink Gasm. Again, like it's overflowing, exploding on here. I, I don't know. I'm gonna go in with this. I don't have that much left. It's like exploded all over, but I don't have a lot of it. So I'm kind of like scraping it on my cheeks, but it retails for 42 bucks as well. It really is beautiful though. Like I said, one of my favorite blushes of all time really does blend like a dream and gives a pretty like flush to the cheeks, but also a really beautiful glow. So I do really, really like this product. Elf very similarly came out with the blush. So again, this is $9. The shade is Rose You Slay. This is the closest to Pink Gasm. It's not an exact um, shade match as far as that goes. So you are gonna get a different shade from this. This one is a bit darker. So it doesn't look exactly like the Charlotte Tilbury. I actually find the e.l.f. to be a bit more pigmented. You have to blend them a smidge more on the blushes than the Charlotte Tilbury, I would say. But for the price difference between $42 and nine, I'm good with the, with the little extra blending myself personally. I just wanna put that out there. So you have to blend it, you know, maybe for a second more, but I do find that they blend fine. I know some people were saying that they are patchy on them. So like I said, you might have to blend it a little bit more. I haven't found that they're actually patchy on my skin though. I mean, like I just blended that out. It looks seamless on me at least. So obviously everyone is gonna have a different experience, but they are quite similar. Like I said, the shade is a little bit different. This one's a little bit deeper, more berry toned, 
a little bit lighter, a little more peachy, but overall quite similar. And now for a highlight, we have the Pillow Talk highlight from Charlotte Tilbury and Rose Quartz from e.l.f. So I'm gonna go in with Pillow Talk first. These are both more of like a pinky toned highlight um, and very pretty. Squeeze some of this out, pop it on our cheeks. I'm gonna just blend with my finger again, same price point, 42 versus $9. Just blending this out, very, very pretty glow seamlessly blends into the skin beautiful product that's the thing with charlotte tilbury is she does make beautiful products um and that's why everyone and their mother is trying to dupe them i get it she charges a lot for her products but they are pretty the rose quartz beauty light wand from elf halo glow this is actually my least favorite of these that they came out with like my least favorite shade i would say but it is the most similar to pillow talk which is why i want to use it but i actually prefer the other highlight shades to this one this one on me it ends up looking a little grayish i think because it is a little bit darker i think than pillow talk is which you'll see when i blend it out but it gives a little like a gray almost cast it's very subtle where this one is a little bit more of that true like glowy kind of pearlescent where this one comes off a little gray. But overall for the price difference, like I'm not sure that I would say, oh, this is worth, you know, 30 something dollars more. But again, the answer to that would be different for everybody. I'm just saying for myself personally, when I'm going to, you know, repurchase products. All right, so that was it for a, like liquid products. Now we're gonna move into some powder and then the rest of the face and stuff. For this next one, this one isn't as obvious as a dupe. To be honest, I don't know if this was necessarily made as a dupe or not. These are just the closest products that I have in my collection. I do think they do work quite similarly. And to be honest with you, I don't like either of them. I'm just gonna put that out there before I even apply them. But we have the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder Glow Version. So I'm gonna put it on. This retails for $39 and basically it sets the skin like a translucent loose powder would do, but it adds a glow instead of a typical matte finish for a powder. Now, when this first came out and this like first craze of like these glowy setting powders. I was like, oh, amazing because I have dry skin. And I actually used to use this all the time as well as the e.l.f. version until I really started to realize that when it first goes on, it looks pretty, I think, because it sets your skin while still giving it a glow instead of a matte look. But at the end of the day, I looked crazy with both versions, honestly. And it took me months to figure it out because I was wearing these for months. Um, so this was a product that honestly I was wrong about in both of them. Thought that I liked them and then realized like, wow, this really does not look good after you wear it for a full day. So we have the e.l.f. Halo Glow, which again is the exact same concept. This one retails for $8. Again, gonna set the skin while giving it a glow. And I just think as the day goes on, it definitely like kind of accentuates texture, pores, any unevenness you have in your skin. Um, both products really do. So neither of them would be a product, to be honest, that I would recommend, but they, they are similar. Um, so if you like this, then you might like this because I do think they work very similar. But for me, it's a no on both. Alrighty, I went ahead and zoomed you guys in as we work on the eyes. Now on the high-end side, we have the Anastasia Brow Freeze. This retails for $23, I believe, and basically is like a brow gel that is going to lift your brows up, pick them up, and put them in place. So I have a little spoolie here. This is how I feel like this product applies best. I just put some on a spoolie and run it through my brows and kind of press them how I want them. That was actually, honestly, too much so let me go back in and as you can see it pretty much instantly picks up the brows they do last well with this it does add a slight tint to the brows when it dries down it gets better but it does add a slight like grayish tint to the brows but it's nothing crazy it's not a bad product but elf again gave us something very similar um it is the elf brow lift i think they have another one too but i have the brow lift one this is six bucks and works quite similarly so i'm going to use another fresh spoolie Go in with some, just kind of coat my spoolie with it. I know this has like a, they both come with like applicators, but these little spoolies will basically work the same. Um, and this pretty much does the same thing. I'm gonna pick up the brows, put them in place. Also does give a little bit of a gray cast, so both kind of do that, which is why I'm not the biggest fan of these brow freeze products really from any company. I like just like brow gels better. Although I will say I can see now, the e.l.f. one definitely gave more of a gray cast to our eyebrows than the Anastasia one did. So that is something to know. We'll let them dry down because maybe when it dries down, it'll be a little bit clearer. So let's give it like 30 seconds. Okay, it's been almost like three minutes. I feel like they're pretty much dried down. I would say the Anastasia one definitely changes the color of the brows a lot less than the e.l.f. one does. I've never put these like right next to each other I don't think. Elf one is going to change the color of your brows a little bit more. If you're going to go in with like a brow product after that's going to add more color it might not make the biggest difference to you but if you're just going to use this as the only product on your brows keep in mind the elf one is going to definitely make your brows a little bit lighter. 
um, than the Anastasia one is. But again, is it worth the price difference? That would be up to you to say. I know everyone has different preferences. So obviously just wanna show you guys the differences. That's what this whole video is about. So moving right along, we're gonna go in with eyeshadow. So we have the infamous. These were like the first to do it. So you gotta give credit where credit's due. Actually, probably not, but I feel like they're the first ones that made this a really popular product. I remember when these first came out, I was like, I need them. They're the Stila Liquid Eyeshadows. So I have this in shade Wanderlust and then e.l.f. came out with these... I don't know what Elf calls these. I'm looking up just liquid eyeshadow, maybe? Liquid metallic eyeshadow. So this is $6. Stila is $25. I will say with the Elf, you get 3 ml of product, where this you get 4.5. You are definitely getting more um, in the Stila, but let's put them next to each other. So I have Wanderlust and Stila, Pinky Swear, in Elf. These are like the closest shades that I had on hand. Honestly, the Stila one is probably expired as well. Haven't used this in a hot minute. So don't, I wouldn't suggest doing what I do. You know what I mean? Don't do this at home. I'm gonna go in and apply the Stila on my lid. Very pretty pigmented glitter, kind of has like a pinky rose gold shade to it. And one thing I did always like about the Stila ones is they dry pretty quick and you don't have to wait like a hundred years to like open up your eye. Like you can pretty much do it immediately and it's not gonna crease and crack like a lot of other brands did when they came out with these. I feel like a lot of brands came out with liquid eyeshadows and they can really be a mess um, if not done right and they can get really creased and yucky but from what I remember I really liked the elf ones and I felt the same way about them like they dried pretty quickly and didn't leave me creasy so I'm going in on this eye now with the elf I would say with this the main difference is like the elf one has the glitter not as much of the like foiled shimmer that you get from the Stila. You're definitely getting more on the Stila side, like more of that like glitter shimmer. So it depends kind of what you want. The e.l.f. ones do work really well and again are a lot cheaper, so they're not a bad product. But with this one, again, I feel like I can definitely see a difference where with a lot of these other dupes, it's like there's almost no difference. So it's like, why would you spend more? Okay, up next we have one of my newer favorite dupes. So on the high-end side, we have the Benefit Roller Lash. This is actually one of my favorite high-end mascaras. This retails for $28. But e.l.f. came out with the Lash and Roll Mascara for $6. And it is so good. I mean, clearly, I mean, the packaging, they, they were trying to say this was a dupe. Okay, we, we heard you. We heard you loud and clear. And I was really ready to see because I was like, if there is one high-end mascara that I really like, it's the Benefit Roller Lash. I'm gonna go in on this lash, this lash, this eye, and apply. These are the type of mascaras that I really like because they're like lengthening and lifting to the lashes. They don't add like a ton of volume because sometimes my lashes can like look clumpy, I feel like, where this really like lifted my lashes, gave me that curl and looked really nice. But obviously it came at that higher end price. So Elf was like, we coming in with a $6 mascara. That's gonna be really good. So this is the Lash and Roll. This has a curved one as well. So the wands are very, very similar and it works super similarly. It's gonna give a lot of length and lift. If you like super voluminous like lashes, then you're not gonna like either of these, but this is the type of mascara that I personally really love. Like give me all the length and lift and that's exactly what this does for six bucks. So, so good. I feel like if anything, the e.l.f. looks better, honestly. Love this. Okay, we only have a few products left to try. We're gonna jump in to lippies. So this one was not super obvious to me at first, but then when I looked at them next to each other, I was like, oh, I feel like that was what they were going for. So e.l.f. came out with their O Face lipsticks. These, I believe they're $9. Let me double check. Yes, $9. And then I realized, I was like, oh, those are definitely supposed to be dupes for the NARS lippies. This is like a little mini of the NARS. And I was like, oh, those are definitely supposed to be dupes for the NARS lippies. These are $26. So I grabbed two shades that were quite similar. We have Dirty Talk in the Elf, or actually, let me do the NARS first. This is in Ukara. I'm gonna put it on this side. It's a pretty nude shade with a satin finish, like a cool toned kind of nude. And then in the Elf, we have Dirty Talk. Slightly more pinky, very similar as well. This is my favorite shade in the Elf O Face. They're really, really pretty. So you can see the shades are a bit different. This one's definitely more pinky. This one has the more purpley, like cooler toned undertones. Honestly, I like the shade of the Elf one better, but these are definitely supposed to be dupes for one another. And I feel like in this one, the Elf are just as good as the NARS. So, and to be honest, like I said, I like the shade better. So that's for the lips. And then for the lip gloss, this was one that I feel like is not super blatant. To be honest, don't know that it's necessarily supposed to be a dupe, but they're two products that do work quite similarly. Um, the Elf Lip Plumping Lip Gloss, this one is in the shade Champagne Glam. And then whenever I think of lip plumping lip glosses, the first company that I really normally think of is Too Faced with their lip injection lip glosses. I feel like they always come to mind. So I have this in the shade Secret Sauce. This retails for $26. And they just go in and coat the lips. It has like a plumping effect to the lips. It also has 
like glitter and shimmer in it to give like a juicy kind of glossy glow. The e.l.f. Plumping Lip Gloss is $7 and super similar. Also has like the glitter and shimmer into it to give a glossy glow to the lips and does have the plumping effect. I do find the e.l.f. ones to be less like tingly feeling than the Too Faced. So if you don't like like plumping lip glosses when they feel like stingy on the lips, you'll actually probably like the e.l.f. one a lot better, but definitely look quite similar on the lips. I do think this one is a bit more of like plumping, but depending on if you like that or not, might determine which one you would like better. Okay, and then last but most certainly not least, we have my baby. The Urban Decay All Nighter, I love this setting spray. It's like my fave and the one I use most of the time, but it does retail for $36. I'm gonna spritz some on. The thing that I really like about this is not only does it make the makeup last on the skin, but it doesn't change the makeup when it's applied on. So many setting sprays like change, can change the finish of like your foundation, or change the feel of your makeup. This really doesn't. Like it doesn't change the way your makeup looks, not gonna change the way it feels, sets it, make sure that it's gonna last. Elf did come out with a good dupe. This is the Stay All Night Micro Find Setting Mist. And this one retails for $10. So I'll go in and spray this side now. The sprayer is like not working anymore. Okay, I don't know. I can't get the sprayer to work on this one. Nothing's coming out, but there's products in here. Okay, well, I can't get the sprayer to work, but overall it does work similarly if, if I could get the sprayer to come out. I do find that my makeup will last better though with the Urban Decay All Nighter. So this is just always my OG. Not sure what's going on with this. Sorry that I couldn't actually buy it. There is like all product in there. I don't know. Yeah, it just won't. I think this is like broken the top. So sorry about that. But I do prefer the Urban Decay. But if you are looking for a cheaper option, this isn't a bad option if you can get your sprayer to work. But that is that. Overall, I feel like our face looking quite similar. I mean, and I will put the price difference on the screen here so you guys can see the difference in price. But definitely looks quite 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 similar across the board. Elf really does kill it when they come out with their dupes, I have to say, in most cases, they are just as good, if not better. So I hope this video was helpful. I can definitely do it with other brands too. Elf is not the only drugstore brand out there duping some of these high-end brands. Um, so I can definitely do it with different brands as well. If you guys would like that, let me know down below what you wanna see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will link all the products down below and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.